like we all know this issue of foreign puzzle shops coming into the townships and the people of the townships uh, they are now rising against these puzzle shops because allegedly most puzzle shops not even allegedly this one i know for a fact most puzzle shops and, and not just a for puzzle shops owned by foreigners most puzzle shops owned by puzzle shop owners they sell expired food they sell food that is long long expired they sell illegal food that when you check the barcodes the food doesn't appear online when you scan the barcode of this food so in alexandra people are blaming this on the landlord and they're now attacking the landlord and the landlord are taking back but i want you to listen to this so you can understand something about what's happening in alexandra but where i'm standing out and i want to show you this is the shop and this is where Lisedi bought her snack. Not so long ago, um, we saw forensics as well as various departments coming in just to swipe the, the area and inspectors, to be correct, um, to swipe the area to get an idea in terms of what occurred. You will remember in an incident in Naledi with the six children, there was an issue of the fact that the food itself could not be seen whether or not was um, it had the actual chemicals, but they could tell what the children had passed away from. But inspectors kept saying that it could be something within the shop. So when you're at the shop, then you can actually get those swaps that are going to give you an idea what sort of chemicals could be within that shop. So those are still being investigated by the family. Now, Aldrin, as we were talking, um, we were joined by Umama. Please come closer. She is the ward councillor in this area. And, and, and I want to bring you closer because you were in that meeting yesterday. Um, Mama, if you could just tell us, when the meeting broke down, um, what was the issue? Can I be clear with the issue? Yes, yes ma'am. Tell me what happened. I'll hold the mic. About the meeting? Yes. yes oh, yeah. In fact, a lot of things were happening here. What I can say on my side. Regarding the meetings, I was just hearing, hearing, hearing that there is going to be a meeting. The meeting was not properly organized. Later, I hear that uh, is the, there is going to be a meeting of landlords. Mm -hmm. Landlords, meaning this which was discussed, Alexander, not in what one way, Alexander, that Alexandrian community take this issue into their own hands because the kids that are dying, they are, they are kids. They feel that this thing is happening almost throughout. Uh, so everything, uh, anything was happening in, in, in the corner. So yesterday there was a meeting, but the time, it was not clear. So people went to the meeting. I just got a message that the meeting was not well attended. They've sent me here. Mm. And I've, I, I, I talked to them. Which, on my side, I was not aware properly about the meeting, but I'm aware of today's meeting that has been called by councillors of Alexander. At 10 o'clock, I think I'm going there, we are going to sit down and speak about the way forward. Do you feel the community then does agree or is there a division? I think there is a division because we are having some WhatsApp groups. Ne? In my WhatsApp group of what one would date, one of eight of service delivery, there was a, a, a cry of there is this division amongst a community. At 10 Vasco, there was some movement, a lot of uh, community in the evening, they were there trying to close these shops. So this community of that place were protecting this Paza shop saying why these people came in the dark, why they don't come during the day and everything must happen, everybody seeing everything what is happening, which I agree with them because others now they are taking advantage of the situation. Why, why we must sit down and talk and talk 
and come up with a, way, a proper way forward. Yes. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Mama, and also for joining us. Um, so, Aldrin, that division by Umama just being explained, obviously um, at night when people are at home, it's quite um, a worry that people then would take that time to close the shop. So that has been a concern as well. Hi, Nisuide, right? So, blaming foreigners only, it won't help the discussion, the conversation, because this is deeper than just a foreigners occupying these tech shops. Why are they occupying these tech shops? Is it their land? No, it's not. Whose land is it? Or oh, his land is for uh, Mr. Mr. Mabaso. Oh, Mr. Mabaso owns this land where this puzzle shop is occupied. Does he have a title deed to this land? Who built this puzzle shop? That is Mr. Mabaso's puzzle shop. Oh, it's his, it's his garage. You say, how did this foreigner enter here and start this shop? No, this foreigner uh, is renting to Mr. Mabas. Oh, landlords are taking money from foreigners who are illegal foreigners, who are selling illegal food, expired food, in these puzzle shops. So you see, there's also locals involved in this. And this is what uh, this mother is saying. He's saying that the problem is when the people rise and the landlords defend these puzzle shops because they're getting money from it. And another issue is that most of our people, South Africans in the townships, want to take advantage of everything that is happening with the outcrowds puzzle shops to want to loot these puzzle shops at night. Why not do it during the day? That's what this mother is doing, is saying. Why not do it during the day where everyone can see, where the people can agree with what you're doing, where you can even call the police to come and assess your march, your protest, your looting. But the problem is that people want to take advantage of this and want to go there and break into these shops and not just take the food to go ban them. Some want to take the food to go eat them because maybe of poverty, because maybe of unemployment, because maybe they don't afford, they don't have the money to buy. So they see an opportunity, they don't care if these foods are expired or not. They want to buy, they want to feed themselves, they want to eat. So there's many problems involved in just one discussion. And we have to have a full, broader discussion so we can understand everyone's perspective. I'm not saying excuse foreigners. I'm not saying excuse the landlord. I'm not saying excuse the protesters. I'm not saying excuse people who are loading this food to eat, not to ban. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, can we listen to everyone and have a broad discussion? What actually is happening? Why is all of this happening? What can be done, you know, for everyone to win, to benefit, even the landlords who are crying, because they are crying. Imagine a landlord you've been taking, you've been getting 4.5 every month, and then there's a possibility you will never get that anymore, because someone who's renting uh, one of your shops, uh, people are trying to chase that person. So you're also going to ask, okay, you're chasing him, who's an alternative? Oh, you are South African. You are ready to enter. Okay, can you enter? Can you discuss how you're going to pay me? You see? So, it's a lot happening, man. It's a lot happening in our country. A lot is happening in our country, our faith. A lot is happening. But it is what it is. Thank you very much.